if we can do a better job at learning how to make our science clear to the public. And now I try not to wiggle too much. You can wiggle as much as you like. <laughs> It can go a long way that they understand why fish matter, why fisheries matter, and what's at stake for them. Uh, my name is Marlis Douglas. I'm a professor at the University of Arkansas in Fayetteville, and I'm currently second vice president of the American Fishery Society. I was always fascinated with, with nature. I was particularly fascinated by water. And in the water, there were fish. And I was just absolutely mesmerized. So um, there was just something about them, the effortlessness with which they navigate the water, the currents, the deep. And so then I had the opportunity to get an education where I could actually make it a profession to study nature, and particularly fish. As scientists, we really have to make an effort to communicate effectively, and effectively means so the public understands why fish matter and what's at stake if you lose them or their habitat. We get a lot of technical training as scientists, but we get practically no training in effective communication, effective communication not to other uh, fishery scientists, but to people we collaborate with, like engineers or managers, administrators or decision makers or policy makers. So therefore, we really need to learn how to more effectively communicate and how to interact with people. Science is very important to inform policy because policy is basically where ultimately people who are not biologists base decisions on. And it's our job to help them derive policies which will match the goals we try to achieve. So, and science has really the role to inform these policies that we, in a way, first understand what, what's going on in nature, what do fish populations in our case need, and how do these policies need to be written that the needs of fishes can be addressed. So, of course, policy often uh, has to weigh different interests, and our job as fisheries biologists is basically weigh in with the interests of the fish, the fisheries, and of course, and people who depend on them either as livelihood or for recreational purposes. Environmental change are natural processes, and fish populations have an innate capacity to adapt to these changes. But one problem is the changes that happen right now or at a much faster rate than they were historically. And evolutionary mechanisms which help species to adapt to environmental changes are at the slower pace. So the rate of change right now outpaces the capacity of natural populations to keep track with that. So that, that's a challenge. The best thing we can do basically is trying to retain the natural populations, assure that they have kind of connectivity amongst the populations because that helps exchanging genetic variability. And the genetic variability is ultimately the material on which adaptation works. So by retaining healthy populations, that's the best mechanism we can do basically to help species adapt to environmental change. <laughs>